You know, it, it feels almost the same today as it did 30 years ago. We have fewer people here, but it feels the same. Churches tend to resist change, and it's very difficult to, to move out of that system that they have been in for so long. And Evergreen, over the last couple of years, has reevaluated and said, where can we best use our assets, and how can we use those for the community and for college that is right across the street? So we did the studies and talked to all the members and said, how would you feel about this? And what we've agreed is it's time for change and that change can actually be good when you're seeking God's will. I was a student at Rhodes and um, just was looking for somewhere to go to church and this was across the street and that was pretty easy. There were kind of people from the neighborhood. There were the Rhodes professors the dean of the medical school, you know, there such diversity of people that were here. And then it followed that there was a lot of diversity of belief. Um, and that was really attractive. We're an inclusive church. Uh, many of the churches in the community that do wonderful things, but they're very conservative in their approach. And, and in my view, a little bit exclusive, uh, whether it be gender, sexual orientation, um, race. Um, it, it, we are very open-minded. We have conservative people, we have uh, moderate people, we have liberal folks, but we're very open to listening to other points of view and welcoming people. It doesn't matter who you are, how much money you make, um, who your parents were, it doesn't matter. We love you because God loves you. I see fewer faces in the sanctuary, which I think that's probably nationwide that's happening everywhere in our churches but I feel the same. I love, I love my church. I think maybe uh, from the outside, you know, looking uh, at Evergreen, you know, it looks pretty traditional. And then, you know, some of our longtime members might uh, surprise you with uh, just the diversity of attitudes and politics that you'll find here. When I think back on who helped shape who I am as an adult, uh, some of the key adults when I when I think back, are evergreen adults. At first, I was reluctant about our chances of making it through all of this. And now I'm starting to feel the, a buoyancy uh, that is just lifting us up. And it's, a, it, I'm, it's really exciting. For us, it's very much a natural extension of who we've been to be a host to a community of people who are Presbyterian, who are Christian, and um, seeking to live out their own faith in the way that we as a college have. We put together an information forum to attract a new co-pastor or, or, uh, at first that will eventually become our pastor, as our current pastor is, is, is planning to retire within a couple of years. We described it as the opportunity as being both liberating and frightening at the same time. Um, liberating in that we no longer have to worry about the upkeep and major capital expense of this building and the complex and the grounds, but frightening in that we're not sure where that's going to lead us. Um, but I love that. I, mean, I love that opportunity. A lot of times when the pastor goes to a church, everything's locked in and you just fill a position of another pastor. This pastor is going to be able to start and say, where can I go and what can I do? I think the best selling point is that you, the, the person who is coming in as a new minister, will have the opportunity to kind of write their future and write the future of this congregation. I believe whoever looks at this church, that that person is going to say possibilities beyond possibilities and risks beyond risks and be willing to combine those two together. And that takes a special person. This always felt like home. So it was an easy place to come back to when I 
um, got married and when I had kids. And then my children are involved in the play school. And this is where they come every day to be taken care of while I'm at work. Well, Evergreen is where it should be. Once you close in and start doing ministry to yourself, the statistics show it, you're gonna die. Um, God calls us to go beyond ourselves, to be willing to die to self, uh, in essence. And the biblical message is, is you go out into the world, not that you stay in your own little comfortable place. We are called to go out into the world. And that's what Evergreen has always done with its outreach ministries and what it will continue to do. I think the church as a whole, you know, there's a new, you know, there's a new sort of energy um, uh, in the church about, uh, you know, let's find a new way to be relevant. We are looking for someone that's energetic, somebody that is passionate, um, someone who is as passionate as our congregation about um, leading us into the future, about making the changes that we know we need to make, um, and about envisioning things that maybe we haven't thought of as a congregation. When I think of Evergreen today, I think very much of a, a sister a companion institution that we are now in partnership with. And my hope for that relationship is that some of the wisdom that we as Rhodes College have acquired about how to open our doors wider and to sort of spread our gates to a much wider constituency of people than we would have been hanging out with two or three decades ago uh, will bring fruitfulness again to this congregation.